If you're a gaming lover, you know Nintendo. In fact, every child of the 70s to 90s has memories of Nintendo and how they spent a lot of time with the popular Nintendo games. Nintendo not only has successful gaming products, but it has created an entire culture around it. And surprisingly, this worldwide gaming giant we are all familiar with began over a century ago as a small playing card company called Nintendo Kopai, which means playing cards. In today's video, we're going to talk about the history of this gaming giant, Nintendo. How did it all start? What did the company face along the way? And most importantly, talk about some of its success stories. Well, you guys probably haven't noticed, but the Nintendo company's dominance in the video game market began even before the release of Super Mario Bros. In reality, it had a solid reputation as a provider of entertaining games for about 70 years before the introduction of the first video game. Nintendo's roots go back to the 1800s, when the company brought back the popularity of car games to Japan. After the crash of 1983, Nintendo also brought back the video game industry. Nintendo was founded by Fusajiro Yamauchi in 1889, at a time when there was a ban on gambling in Japan. The Japanese government authorized handcrafted Hanafuda cards since they lacked numerical symbols and were not linked with gambling. Soon, Nintendo began making more and more card varieties and partnered with Japan Tobacco to sell them in tobacco shops. Due to family politics and the original founder's retirement in 1929, the Nintendo Kopai was renamed Yamauchi Nintendo & Company by its new president in 1933. The next big milestone for Nintendo occurred in 1949, when Hiroshi Yamauchi became the company's third president. In his term, Nintendo introduced a new era by becoming Japan's first corporation to create playing cards from plastic. Due to plastic cards, the company had gained widespread recognition and had further cemented its reputation as an inventive brand in the entertainment industry. The firm also started to gain an international reputation from that time. After relocating to a new building in 1952 and expanding globally, Hiroshi, the company's president, came up with a brilliant idea of forming a partnership with Disney, which had enjoyed massive popularity in Japan. By including well-known Disney characters on Nintendo cards, Nintendo was able to increase their popularity among Japanese families. It was also during this time that books were published explaining how to play each of the Hanafusa games in great detail. As a result of the idea's success, Nintendo sold over 600,000 cards in a single year, pushing Hiroshi to list the firm on the Osaka Stock Exchange in 1962. The impulse to explore new territory was also firmly established in this period. In order to encompass a larger range of then-current and future products, the company's name was shortened to Nintendo Company Limited in 1963, after a few modifications. After suffering losses in other businesses, the company created its first research and development unit, Games, in 1964. The game's first toy was named Rabbit Coaster. In 1965, Nintendo hired a Doshisha University graduate named Gunpei Yokoi as an assembly line maintenance engineer for the line that created the Hanafuda cards. The card had faded in popularity by that point, so Gunpei occasionally created things for his own personal enjoyment, and as fate would have it, Hiroshi Yamauchi happened to visit the plant one day and noticed one of Gunpei's inventions, the Ultra Hand, an extending arm that could grasp onto things far away. That small thing became one of Nintendo's biggest triumphs, selling 1.2 million copies throughout Japan and putting Nintendo back on the map. Gunpei's breakthrough at Nintendo, however, was not his last. He was also in charge of the Ultra Machine, a contraption that can toss baseballs, and the popular Love Tester, a device that tests a guy's and girl's romantic sentiments for each other. Of course, it was far from accurate, but it was still very entertaining. In 1979, Gunpei Yokoi saw a bored man playing with his calculator. This gave him the idea for a handheld video game. So in 1980, Nintendo released the first Game & Watch, a portable video game series. These systems did not have any replaceable cartridges. As a result, the hardware was only designed for use with a single game. The initial Game & Watch game, Ball, was a tremendous hit and was distributed globally. Yokoi then created the next cross D-pad design for a Donkey Kong version in 1982. That design has proven very successful and eventually received a Technology and Engineering Emmy Award. From 1979 through 1986, Nintendo worked with Mitsubishi Electric to develop their own video game system. As a consequence, the Color TV Game 6 and Color TV Game 15 consoles were released in 1977 and 1978, respectively. These were consoles that could be connected to a TV and played a very basic version of Pong with a few cosmetic changes. At the time, the firm also focused on simple arcade games like Sheriff and Radar Scope, and while they had considerable success in their home country, 
trying to break into the American market proved far more challenging, almost pushing them to the brink of financial disaster. However, in 1985, another crucial employee had emerged from a simple desk position as an apprentice in the planning department. Shigeru Miyamoto played a major role in reversing Nintendo's declining trajectory and catapulting the company to iconic status. By the mid-1980s, Nintendo's attention had switched more to the home market, and the firm quickly debuted the Family Computer, a home system they had been working on for quite some time. In Japan, it was known as the Famicom. The rest of the world recognized it as the Nintendo Entertainment System, and owing to Super Mario Bros. and subsequently Zelda, it radically revolutionized home entertainment in the whole game sector in 1985. It quickly became the best-selling console of its generation. Any serious gamer would tell you that the original NES was one of the most iconic consoles ever created. It got a whole generation of kids interested in games and made them an important part of world culture. In 1988, Nintendo came up with the idea of combining the two highly popular concepts of the Game & Watch's portability and the NES cartridge interchangeability to create the new Game Boy portable device. So on April 21st, 1989, the Game Boy was released. Then, Minoru Arakawa, president of Nintendo of America, negotiated a contract to package the popular third-party game Tetris with the Game Boy, and the rest was an enormous success. The Game Boy was the first portable device that allowed players to play with interchangeable game titles and continual innovation and development. New games were continually released, and several of Nintendo's most famous titles, such as Super Mario Bros., received popular remakes on this platform. The Nintendo 64, or N64, was released in 1996 and marked a gaming milestone. The N64, released in the fifth generation of gaming, was a pioneer in console design and game library. The N64 was a successful platform that showed what modern gaming might be, and its titles helped progress and influence game design for years. The GameCube was a more powerful console than the N64, which employed CDs. Launched after 9-11 and overshadowed by the original PlayStation, the GameCube was still a fairly successful system. 2004 was a year of change for the company. Despite several earlier accomplishments, revenues were down in 2004, and they needed something to boost them. Nintendo pulled another ace from Mario's sleeve, which rocked the gaming industry. The DS was a dual-screened Game Boy with a touchscreen and pen. In 2006, the Wii competed with Sony's PlayStation 3, the most powerful system available. The former lacked fancy graphics and equivalent hardware, but was a success. According to CNBC statistics, their most recent system, the Nintendo Switch, which was introduced in 2017, is presently one of the most popular consoles on the market, with 103.534 million units sold. It can play games on the move as well as dock and play on a larger screen. Last but not least, Nintendo has never been one to go after the very latest and best tech in their products. Instead, focusing on creativity and how to effectively incorporate it into simple, entertaining games. In short, the mentality of adapting to changes according to time has kept Nintendo running for over 130 years. That was all for today. What Nintendo console do you love the most? Tell us in the comment section. Big Company Business will be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. See you in the next one!